Hi, my name is Simon Lucas. I'm the editor of What Hi-Fi, and I'm here on the What Hi-Fi International News Stage at CES 2016 in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I am happy to be joined by Bob Stewart, who's the creator, founder, instigator, and what have you of MQA. Bob's going to explain a little bit about MQA, which is at a very pivotal time, I understand. Yeah, we think we're at a great stage. So, <laughs> so MQA, to put briefly, is, is a revolutionary British technology which really is designed to capture the sound of the original music performance. It's, it's exciting because we can get the actual sound that happens in the studio captured with full detail and delivered quite efficiently. So we came up with methods to make the file quite small. And for the first time, we think, in the history of recorded music, you can have one thing which is produced in the studio which can be used anywhere. It can be used in your car, it can be used in your phone. It can also be used on the most extreme playback system. Okay. And the same asset gives you the full music. Right. And that's what's so really exciting about it. Well, to, to achieve that sort of uh, sound quality and that kind of fidelity um, in, in relation to the original recording, I mean, traditionally, that requires a file size of, of, of colossal proportions. Yes, yeah? it does. Now, what I want to do is to ask you how you have managed to make that file so much very smaller. But I also need you to do that within about two minutes. Now, it's probably one or the other, isn't so it? So you don't want the eight-hour version? No. Okay. Well, <laughs> perhaps for the editor's cut, yeah? Right. OK, so basically, when we listen, we listen in analog. Mm -hmm. That's how our ears work. Sound is analog. and. We're trying to move a sound from the studio, which is analog, to an analog sound at the other end. And the digital bit in the middle is just useful delivery. It's effective delivery. Yeah. What we discovered in the last 10 years already, working on high resolution, was that digital audio wasn't properly constructed, didn't work as efficiently, wasn't optimized to the human hearing system. And the things that led us in this direction was obviously seeing things go out of control in the consumer space, but also really important insights from neuroscience that teach us how we're here. And we put this together. Once you've discovered this, then you, you realize you can encode the sound really efficiently and get everything, and we don't throw anything away. OK. Yeah? So yeah. That's, the, that's the thing that's completely different. It, it's been really exciting, because in order to, to prove this point, we've had to work at the sharp end with recording engineers, with producers, with artists you know, listening to their sound in their room. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, delivering it to the customer authentically. And there's a light that comes on on the product, or there's a display that says, this is what was heard. This is what was sound off. Uh, it's tremendously exciting. OK. And you've got, um, and you've got basically the agreement to say so from artists, from, from record companies, from the, from the owners of these original recordings to sort of um, give authenticity to the claim. Well, but this course. is precisely what was, what was intended. I mean, if you think about what I just said, it's a big project because we're saying we're taking the analog to the analog, and that sure. means it's the whole ecosystem. So over the last three years, we've been working really intensely, well, maybe four years, on each part of the chain, the recording studio, the mastering studio, the, the, the encoding chain, you know, the distribution chain, mm. the people who make products, the playback products. So to get it all right, to get it all the way through, it's been a, a lot of work. That's sure. why we've been so busy. Yeah. Um, and yes, to answer your question completely, at the front end, we've been doing a lot of work with recording producers, um, listening to their content, getting them comfortable. Originally, we thought we may have trouble, but in fact, yeah. there hasn't been one case where people didn't say, wow, how did you do that? It's so much better. So you know. the benefit has been obvious it's every been, time. It's been obvious. Because I know that you and I, you and I have spoken about MQA. Yeah. For, for been speaking about that for a while, but it seems to me, and it feels to me like you have reached some kind of tipping point uh, at CES yes. this year. So what's exactly? Well, th what's going to happen in the next few days with MQA? It feels like a long time, but it's actually only a year since we announced it. Is that right? That's right. Somehow it, it feels like longer. It feels like a lifetime to me, but but that's right. But but in fact, what's happened is we, we've we've gone far enough now to get content coming through. So you may have seen in December. There was an announcement from 2L. This is a small label, but it's a very yeah. important one because they make extremely high quality. Well, I saw the 2L demonstration yesterday, and, yeah. it, was just, and, and it worked, and it was yeah. streaming MQA. It was so they put their entire catalog in MQA up, uh, on, you know, I think on the 1st of January, something like that. Yeah. And it, you know, it's now being flowing into services, into retailers, into, you know, if we're doing some testing on that catalog mm -hmm. of the Tidal service. Um, 
and companies like that developing apps, developing the whole ecosystems, it's, it's a big project. So we're able to show here, we're showing in our room, we can demonstrate streaming from Tidal, we can show you apps, we can show you products from third parties. That's the other part of the year's project has been getting companies to Im Im embed MQA properly into the product. Mm -hmm. So things like, there is, you know, we've got, we're showing here, we're able to announce about, I think it's about 20 uh, companies, okay. which is going to lead to 100 products by, by Easter time. But wow. some of them are on display from companies like Onkyo and Pioneer, mm -hmm. you know, companies like, uh, we're, sh we're showing this um, on, on this device here, proof, proof of concept on an Android phone, this is with HTC. Uh -huh. To, to get the real quality, because it, in these phones, there's a 192 DAC. So there's suddenly going to be some MQA ubiquity at CES, and it's going to be on a number of different stands in a number of different venues. If you think what I said earlier about having one thing that we can release, it, you know, I keep, I keep mentioning that the music industry used to make one product, it was called the record, the vinyl disc. And you, you chose how you played it back. Sure. But today they've got 30, 40, 50 different deliverables. It's a bit chaotic. The idea that can be one thing that can play on the phone. And because of the way the decoder works, we get the very highest quality that this platform can deliver. Mm -hmm. And you know, another example I've got here, this is the Onkyo portable player, the DAP. Fabulous device. This gives the quality it can give. Mm -hmm. And all the way up to... Companies like MyTech who are demonstrating, and Meridian's license, obviously, but also companies like DCS who make the very, Berkeley make the finest D2A okay. converters. So we, we, we've got a, a spectrum of playback capability, but the fact there can be a software decoder, which is what happens in the phone, yeah. means that the music labels can immediately access a large audience. Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have to go out and buy something new, you just download the app, get going, and it sounds amazing. Sure. So. It seems to me then that you've, you've actually had to be quite discerning uh, in terms of the, the people you've chosen to partner with. This isn't just something you're going to license to anybody to implement any way they like. Well, that's not strictly true because we have a free and open licensing system. Okay. Right? So anybody can come to us. We have chosen to sequence it in a way which tells the story and which is also pragmatic, the people that are able to work with us. Some companies really want to do it, but they've got so much up, you know, on their, on their plates. Some have worked very quickly. But, uh, but we're making sure that, that at least in this early phase, everything that comes out is uh, expressing exactly what we feel about the sound quality okay. and about the artist's intention. Because what we've heard from the labels is they love this so much, but they say, you, you know, it is authenticating. You have to get it there. We're relying on you to do yeah. that. Don't let it be changed on the route. So, anyway, it's not hard. It's just because it's an ecosystem thing, because it's end to end, we have to pay attention to each piece. Sure. And that's why a year ago we sat here and said, we've launched it. And now we're here with products demonstrating, showing streaming, showing, you know. Mm -hmm. Cat real catalog you can buy, you can go and buy it today. Well, that's right. So you're in a, you're in a position now where in terms of like uh, software, not software support, but catalog support and the actual uh, availability of music. Because what I found even in the course of yesterday is yeah. that certainly with uh, video products, the hardware is all in place. It all sounds extremely good. And then when it comes to saying what's the availability of the video content for me to watch, it's not in place. Of course, we've been talking intensely with the major music labels and making, I would say, extraordinary progress there. And, you know, watch this space. Um, we've also been working with the independents because they're perhaps more agile or because they're, they're niche and able to move more quickly. Um, and you, 2L have made an announcement. There's lots of other little labels where you're encoding their content. But, of course, for this to really work, we need the support of the majors. Mm -hmm. We need all that catalog because we need everything, every, everything available. Sure. And uh, that in itself is a project. <laughs> well, sure. Yeah. yeah. There's a, yeah. Well, there's an element of, um, uh, uh, of selling somebody their record collection again, isn't there? Well, of course, you're not selling somebody their collection again if, if you're streaming it. Sure. And one of the great things about MQA is, is, that, is that the file we make is small enough to stream today. So any service can pick this up. And we've also had another part of the work we've been doing has been in Japan with those labels, download stores, nascent streaming services. Um, you don't have to buy Kind of Blue again if you can mm -hmm. listen to it on the streaming service. Okay. But if you want to, 
you know, I'm sure they'll be delighted to sell it. To I'm you. quite <laughs> more than more than happy. So where uh, where is MQA going to be uh, demonstrated throughout CES in the next few days? So uh, mostly in in the Venetian. Uh huh. MQA has got a room 30, 30, 335. But several of our partners, Orinda, Oralic, Blue Sound, they're showing there. It's being shown in other suites where we've got rec like recording engineers who've made recordings and they just wanted to use MQA to show that there. So I think on the Van der Steen room, places like that. But also Pioneer, Onkyo, and HTC are showing at their booths in somewhere in the main convention. Okay, excellent. So, so anyway. Splendid. Well, thanks very much Is for your time. Thanks for telling us about that. We'll be going to have a look at that later and probably reporting back on that Thursday or Friday on, yeah. uh, on the whathifi.com. But in the meantime, thanks very much to Bob Stewart, uh -huh. uh, technological genius and a man with tremendous taste in shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, pal. Cheers.